Hey everyone, Miranda Patron here with you to do another super fun project. This one is for the holiday season on this hexagon unfinished wood. And I'll put these in the shop as well, my Etsy shop. So I've just taken it and painted it matte black and then I found my center, I just connected it using the protractor from corners to corners. And I am going to use some fun products today. I'm going to start off with my compass here and give myself kind of a guideline circle in the center because we are going to pour some PBO. And if you're not familiar with PBO, it is a great line of paints where they have different effects. And this one today I'm going to use is going to be the honeycomb effect. We're just going to get a guideline circle down here because you kind of have to pour it and then move your piece around a little bit quickly to just spread it into the area that you want it to go for a circle. So the one that I'm going to use today is the Fantasy Prisme Moonstone. This one is absolutely gorgeous silvery effect for the holidays, great metallic, and I'm just going to pour it directly onto my piece. There's no dotting. I don't use a paintbrush. It'll mess with the effects if you do that. So I'm pouring it directly onto the piece. And I just want to gauge about how much I need to fill the circle that I put here in the center. All right, so you got to work kind of quickly with it because once the cells start forming, it's got a petroleum base, so once the cells start forming, you're gonna distort them. If you move it around too much, it's just gonna change the effect a little. So I just wanna decently quick, I mean, not record time speeding like a maniac, but <laughs> decently quick, just kind of tilt it around here, letting it attach and adhere to the wood piece and just kind of following my guideline of the circle. So you can see it's not super thin, it doesn't run right off. It's thick enough to work with on a slower scale. And just push it around, swirl it around there into your circle and then bring that back to the middle. Because if you leave it on the outer edge, it's gonna have distorted cells along the outer part. All right, so we're gonna see how over time it starts to change here. I'm trying to block the light. My studio lights just are not great for this. And that's the finished product. All right, so I think we're gonna do this kind of little holiday festive one. We'll do some holly leaves and some red down the sides. So our PBO now is dry and I just made a little tiny pattern for myself. I drew a leaf and then I traced it on some paper and this way I can use it on all of them so they'll all be similar to one another. But you can do that with any design. Make your own little stencil and that way you'll have the same all around. You just move it around and trace it on your own. So then you can see once they're all traced if you have them centered or not on your piece and if it looks the way you want then you can start painting. Alright so <clears throat> my friends over at Arteza sent me these super fun paint markers and this is a really nice sparkly gold so I'm actually going to use that to outline each of our leaves here and then we'll do a fill with a sparkly green metallic so I've just shaked this up and then you depress the end to get the ink going, the paint going. Let's see how glittery and fun these are. And that way too it gives you a little bit of guideline to work with as you're painting. There is a little bit of a smell with these but it's not super offensive. Look at how sparkly that is. Those are so fun. Do 
These are great for outlining. They also go on really smooth here. Your paint tip doesn't get caught up, it doesn't splatter. The nibs are made pretty nicely, so it's for smooth flowing paint. So you could just fill these in with dots green dots of varying shades to give them a little depth, but let's do something different and make it a mandala. So I'm going to use the Americana Multi-Surface Metallic Green. And I'm going to grab a larger dotting tool here for you, the dotting styluses. And just a bit where the opening starts. We'll put a big old dot right there. And this one is a little more fluid. Than the Dazzling Metallics. And not tacky at all like the Extreme Sheens have that little bit of a string that kind of pulls up afterwards. Nice plump little dot right there. Now I'm not sure about you guys, but I am not a big fan of sitting around watching paint dry. So what I'll do is work on different sections of the same piece. Or sometimes I'll even work on a completely different piece while I'm making something, but for now, I'm going to go with the Dazzling Metallics Festive Red. And with our guidelines here, we're going to nice get a nice big amount on there. And we'll start at the bottom of our guideline, right next to our PBO there. That guy's got a bubble in it. Pop. So if you guys are new to my channel, and you'll hear me say sometimes when I'm doing this, I'm, I'm pushing the paint. So I'm a paint pusher. If it's not the size you want it, just push it around into the circle as big as you want it. You're not limited to the size that the one tool makes. I know a lot of times I use brushes and that maybe mentality helps me just think out, outside a little bit. Just push it around like a paintbrush. There, we got some good reds and greens going now. Alright, so while these ones are wet, I'm actually going to steal from them a little bit if I can. And do a few rows of this lovely festive red around these dots.
you'll start to get a feel too for sizing. If I want to keep the dots the same size, I just keep redipping it. But as you go around, you just let the paint run off the tool. And as it runs out, it has less paint and makes smaller dots. But that's just one of the things that will come with practice as well. So don't give up, you can do this. And sometimes too, you're up close and personal with your piece. So you start to see it, I think, I'm not really sure. We're our own worst critics. That's the only way I can put it. So if you're staring at it and you're like, oh, that big dot is smaller than that one, or that one's not completely round, or I spaced that one too far, or that one I can see the wood through, whatever, whatever it is that you're telling yourself in your head, don't listen. Just get up, maybe walk away, take a break, and come back, and you'll see it's super pretty. Or even take a picture of your work in progress and then go look at the picture because you'll see it differently, I promise. You know, you sit here and you're like, one, two, three, four, five, I only have five on this side and seven on that side. Or Don't just enjoy the time of painting. Don't let that kind of stuff get you down because no one is going to notice. I've had times where I completely forgot a row <laughs> and I didn't notice. And sometimes other people didn't notice either, so. Just enjoy the art you're creating and enjoy the time. I think dotting is just one of those relaxation art therapy type things. And this little guy that I'm dotting with right now, I call my etcher. And my etcher is a dotting stylus where I accidentally broke the end off. And it actually has become one of my most favorite tools. Not only does it make small dots, but I can sketch in designs that I don't have to erase lines afterwards, especially if I have a black background. It makes it very helpful. There's our little red ones there. All right, so now I know this is unconventional to use pink, but it, I, it looks so great. It really comes through as a nice red. And it's watermelon slice. I'm kind of obsessed with this color. I've been using it a lot. And I'm going to use one of my smaller dotting styluses. Dip it. And above each of those red elements that we just created, I'm going to take it and do a swipe from about, I'll measure it here, but I'd say it's just over half an inch. And we'll swipe down to the element here with the reds. Now I'm just kind of eyeballing it, but you can actually measure it out and find my protractor here. So, doo -doo -doo -doo. Huh, exactly half an inch. That's so funny. So out of each of these elements you could put a little mark for yourself. I need more hands. Put a little mark for yourself at a half an inch. See, like I said, you just start to get used to the amount of paint you need and how far it's going to go with each tool. But it comes with practice and you will get it, I promise. It does not take long. 
There are people who have started dotting and in three to six months they are just off and running with amazing work, amazing pieces that are online now. So, all right, so my watermelon slice, come back here. <clears throat> Start at their little hash mark there and then just pull it along the guideline down to that little ring of red dots that we made. But see, this doesn't look too pink and it's such a great color still really can work as a festive color, I think. I'm justifying it because I normally don't like pink. So that didn't go as far as I wanted it to and all I'm doing is I flip it around to my smaller end and just drag a little bit of the paint with it out to the end. You can see our nice little mandala is really taking some shape here. Alright, so now next to those watermelon slice ones that we put down, I have this gorgeous Extreme Sheen Champagne Gold. This is another one that I'm falling in love with. I absolutely love the color of it. And I'm going to take the same dotting tool because I want about the same size. Now these ones are a little stickier. You'll get a string if you pull up with it so just be cautious of that but they are certainly workable. Now on either side of our watermelon slice I'm just gonna drag it down just like that right next to it on either side here. I'm telling you guys you got this don't worry Dotting tools will help you make the swipes. Just be brave, take your time. And then pull the paint out. If anything, too, sometimes with these extreme sheens, I feel like the tail actually helps you. I mean, the string helps you get a pointier tail at the end. A little chunk of wood spiked up there. Here's a little tip too, going slow on the swipes actually helps keep the paint, I call it wicking, so it's wicked and still kind of dragging along. It gives it time to still adhere to whatever your surface is, stone, canvas, whatever. So as you're taking your time, the paint is still coming off the tool attached to your canvas. Yeah, that's coming along. Looking really nice. Alright, and I think on either little side here, I'm going to switch to the smallest one, which is my etcher. But you just go to your smallest dotting tool or a toothpick or a paintbrush, whatever you have that's small. And I'm just going to go with some of the titanium white just to brighten it up a little bit in here. And white is a really great accent for almost anything. You know, yeah, these are holiday colors, but you can see the more green and red, it gets darker on the black background as well. Throw some white in there. It'll give it some pep, a little accent, 
contrast to the darker colors that you have going. Some sweet little swipes. But you can already see how it's brightening it up, see? And it doesn't take much. That's better. My studio lights were really, really impeding you from being able to see the design in the PBO paint. It was reflecting weird, so that looks much better. <laughs> okay, so now with this small dotting tool, we're going to go with a little bit of this festive green from the Americana line in DecoArt. And you'll see I use a lot of deco art just because their consistency is fantastic right out of the bottle. I almost never have a problem with their paints. We're going to take our smallest tool and do a couple rows of this festive green around our nice metallic green that we put down a little bit ago. I have to say this video tonight is coming on the cusp of my launch for my website which I am super excited about and now you guys can see everything in one place I have the shopping I have a blog that I'm going to be starting up and place for reviews and then also all the painting tutorials are on one tab you can just click it it takes you right to my YouTube And if you're just interested in just the YouTube, you can subscribe and click the bell and then you'll get notified whenever I put another video online. So you'll be the first to know. You guys know I love your feedback too, so keep the awesome comments coming. I try to get to as many as I can, reply. You guys really rocked it on the last video with telling me where y'all from. I absolutely love, it's so cool to hear how people are watching all over the world. You know, you're in, I'm in my little corner here on Lake Erie in Ohio and you know, you go about your day, it starts to feel small, you know, it's small towns, it's the same people that you see daily. Then I go on and I see, hello from Istanbul, hello from Portugal, hello from Puerto Rico, Italy, oh my gosh, I can't even, and all over the U.S., it's so awesome. This is such a great art community. There's so many amazing artists on here. And I encourage you to check them all out. 
everybody's got such a unique style it's so awesome to see the broad range and variety there are so I'm doing three rows of this festive green again around our dazzling green here And the third row just about tucks into the first corner, just for a reference of my um, holly leaf here. See, as I was saying earlier, sometimes when you're up close, Like those, that dot seem way bigger. I picked up a little too much and it spread on the wood, but in my opinion, it does not take away from the piece at all. All right, now I'm gonna go with some turf green, which is one of the multi-surface satin paints. It's just a shade darker and that festive green and I'm going to go a little bit larger here. And the texture of the multi-surface is a little bit thicker, so I'm just swirling it around with my dotting tool so that it adheres to the wood. Actually, it's kind of funny. It's darker on my palette, but it looks lighter against the, the drying of the festive green. That's funny. But it's okay. I just wanted to do different shades of green. But that's the thing, too, the beauty of art. You just kind of go with the flow of... Oh, I meant to do that, right? That's what I meant to do. I think it also helps relax, helps me relax, rather than thinking you messed something up. No, you just went in a different direction. And it's okay. So it's still lovely. One of the things I think I forgot to say at the beginning of this as well is if you want a smoother surface for your wood, because this is just unfinished piece of wood, you can varnish it first or Decor also has a product for wood where it just kind of fills in the cracks like a wood filler and smooths out your surface for you. Or you can accept the challenge. Usually I'm just in a rush, to be honest. When I think of something, I just want to get going at it. I don't want to wait for a 
burnished to dry so if I was at all organized lately I would just do some up and smooth the surface out ahead of time so that I was already prepped but you can see this works too but it doesn't have to be challenging so you can see the two-tone difference in those Let's go back to that metallic green here and go larger with our dots. I can only fit three when I go larger. But you see too that kind of changes up the design a little bit too. You could continue on with smaller dots and that would give you a different design in your leaf. So be creative. Super fun. And that's how you can just make it your own each time and change it up each time. Had a little goober on that one I was making it. Not work the way I wanted. There we go. Alrighty, so I think down in this space here, debating white, I don't want to do the champagne because it's so close to our lovely gold from the paint pens. I want to do something on either side that pops a little, maybe even the white or maybe back to the watermelon slice. I'm just thinking out loud here. This is how I plan. <laughs> Haphazardly, sporadically, just throw paint down. It'll work out. I'm gonna go with the uh, watermelon slice. You'll see some have larger spaces than others, so. We're just going to tuck them in, not overrun the design, let's tuck them in for the night here. <laughs> I might have had too much coffee today. That's okay. Yep, that was what I wanted. So it really ties the red ring in there, so you can see it kind of makes the red more cohesive. I like it. Okay, next. Alright, so I'm toying with the idea here just to make this a little more mandala-ish. Do a nice little petal, I think. So this is my edger. I'm just etching part of the design to see if it's what I want to do. Oops. And I'm just going up and around the swipes that we made with our reds and our champagne and I kind of like that look <clears throat> pardon me all right let's outline that with some true red just so I'm using different shades and that way it kind of breaks up the design a bit. And we'll start off with the larger dots down the edge and work our way up. To the peak of the petal.
So I just stole from one of the other dots because I didn't want a full-on dip of the dots. I just wanted a little bit more paint because I was already in a smaller size. So that's a little trick. I'll do the other side. Alright, while those reds are drying, I think I'm going to grab some more of that metallic green with the small etcher side of my tool. some little swipes up to the top here. So this is partly, I'm going to let you know another little secret, <coughs> because, and you may have no noticed, there's a different amount of space because I got a little varied in the size of my dots as I went along. You may or may not have noticed. But this also helps hide. Dots are a little more revealing. So if I were to just fill the end in with dots here, if you filled it all in with the same color, you could do that, and that would hide, just randomly fill it in as opposed to lines. But if we did rows of dots, oops, rows of dots like we had been progressing, you would be able to really tell the difference in the spacing at the top there. So we'll just tuck a little couple of swipes up there to even that out. I'm going to go to the other end of my dotting tool and back to the white. And I'm going to start at the top of our little reds here and just follow the guideline down and around for just a little highlight.
I'm going to switch ends because I don't want to go over my paint there. Okay, now I think I'm going to go back to that nice metallic red. And we're going to tuck some little swipes on the interior part of this element. Before I go on. Yeah, I like that. Okay.
<clears throat> I decided to get rid of them. I'm just going to keep it the one sided curl. So I'm just painting over it with black here which is the beauty of having a background. If you don't like something that you add, it just doesn't quite fit the piece or what you were going for, just go over it with your background. Definitely before you varnish. And I just had a couple spots here where the, the wood didn't get covered. It must have soaked in a little bit more. I'm just using a soft, small detailer brush to just kind of go over those spots. Alright, I'm sticking with it. I like the lopsided asymmetrical spirals of the silver. So I'm going to leave those there. So this was definitely a multi-paint piece going from the PBO to Arteza pens to deco art paint and the Molotov silver. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and I look forward to hearing all your comments about this festive little mandala, which is not super, super simple, but it gets to be kind of dynamic depending on the elements that you add. So. I encourage you to try it out. Don't be intimidated. Don't be intimidated by the swipes. You can do them, I promise, with the tools. Just keep practicing, you'll get it. And the paint consistency really is what is key. So it needs to be a little bit thinner so it spreads and take your time. All right, well, I am always here. I am on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, but also remember, I now have my own website where you can navigate to any of those spots and see all my tutorials in one place because it'll take you right to YouTube, all my list. Um, and that's MirandaPatroneArt.com. All can it all be lowercase, all be capitals, it doesn't matter. It's MirandaPatroneArt.com. Just no spaces, just a dot com. Plain and simple, easy to remember. <laughs> and I hope to hear from you guys soon. So happy painting. Have a great night.